Let's go get him again. From Les Absolutes Dorian Line, this one right here didn't last long. Discontinuation. It got to this one. I tested this fragrance a bit here, and it's time to give you my initial impression. Coming up next. Fragrance family, welcome to the Rope Zoe channel. I'm your host, Mark. This series, Pop the Cherries, where I pop the cork on a full bottle purchase, give you my initial thoughts. I wore this scent right here on my skin as my scent of the day for a few days, including today. Now it's the time to give you my thoughts on this one before it goes into the vault for a full-fledged review. Now, before we get in the meat and potatoes of Ombre Ternel by the House of Guerlain, did want to thank our sponsor of the day, FragranceX.com. I did want to take the time to thank them for the bottle of Ambre Eternel. Now, you can get a bottle of some of the other ones from the line. Um, this one, I've kept an eye on FragranceX. Unfortunately, this thing is scarce and hard to find. Um, but they do have tons of Guerlain releases on their site and some discontinued ones. Just not this one, at least uh, not the day of shoot today. But... Check out Fragrance X. Um, use my coupon code Robes08. That is my YouTube name. You can pop that in their coupon section. You get 15% off on your purchase, any purchase on Fragrance X. So let's get to talking about Ombre Ternel from the House of Guerlain. And let's see if this one's worth uh, for you to search the interwebs. Find a bottle. Time to go under the hood on this one. Let's take a look at some stats. Release date was back in 2016. The nose behind this is their in-house perfumier, uh, Monsieur Wasser. Major notes to my nose would have to be ombre gris, iris, and leather. So ombre ternel, very, um, the color of the bottle, mm, mm, yes and no. I mean, it's very chalky. It's gray, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So it is my set of the day today so i got the dry down here but i want to remind myself of the introduction and let's delve into this one so how i picture ombre ternel right now it's like a white leather purse the intro of this release is the purse but also the contents inside the purse so it includes all the makeup inside the suede-like interior, not the rough and tumble leather on the outside, but the suede-like interior. The dry down itself shows more of the outside of the purse. So more leather, more rough and tumble. So the introduction of this scent is highly complex, even though it feels very one-dimensional. No personality, honestly. It's very gray in color. Um, it's a very serious scent for true fraghead at the end of the day. And I think it would intrigue many of you that are into this fragrance game because of the artistic touches in this release. This scent starts off white, chalky, buttery, creamy, and it has a light leathery touch to it. It reminds me immediately, like when I first started testing this one out and I haven't worn it too much, but you know, a handful of time enough to do this video. I um, mean, immediately made me think of Diorum because it, it smells classy. It has a lot of the iris and light leather touches that it doesn't have too much personality. You can dress it up, you can wear it casually, but it's more of a dress up type of scent. This is where Ombre Internel brings me. The OG Diorum, not this 2020 BS. The Diorum that I know and love with the iris and the light leather combo. Not too much going on. And like this one, not too much personality. And this is where it's gonna go. Like the ones that hate the original Diorum, they, they say it's too feminine or it's just boring or whatnot. You're not gonna like this one. Um, might as well not try to source it out. This is for the people that actually did like Diorum. This is right up your alley. Even though iris is not listed as a note, this smells like iris. Um, you do get some coriander up top. 
as the main spice. There's some other floral touches in here. There's some ambre gris in here, and there's also some peach up top. Um, so, like I said, very understated, but at the same time, very complex as a release. And that introduction, like I said, uh, white leather purse, but the interior of it. You got some makeup, you got some powder, you got some chalkiness on the inside of that purse, but let's get more into the dry down and let's talk about that. Now, looking at the dry down of Ombre Ternel, the dry down is, the introduction, like I said, it was kind of, not that it was boring, but it, it's very gray. Um, the dry down doesn't give you any more personality here. It's a, it's actually a lot less interesting than the introduction as the iris imagery kind of pulls back. The familiar Gatelaine vanillic sweetness amps up a bit here. The leather, like I said in the introduction, goes from suede interior of a purse to the outside of the purse. So more leather here. It goes powdery from top to bottom, but the powder goes so well with the imagery that I don't think it's a drawback. It actually works very well with the rest of this concoction. This release wouldn't be the same without the powdery aspect. So it's a very much a welcomed addition. There's some mildly salty qualities here. The coriander keeps pushing a bit as the main spice and that peachy and floral tendencies continue to push. But the leathery tone, which is never too big, bold, nor too masculine, sticks around here as the main player. Overall, this is an interesting scent, not a showstopper in my opinion, but one that you can sit back, dissect it, maybe say wow once or twice and go, there's much more here than you initially thought on the first wearing. Now you're on wearing seven and you're like, I can't get enough of it. Um, as a frag head, I definitely appreciate this release. Ombre Ternel is one of those that, um, if this sounds interesting to you, you like the autumn, you like that kind of aspect. Um, I really think that this one would be, you know, it's not that scarce now that you could still find some bottles here and there. It might be time to snatch one up. So now let's get into the revolver on Ombre Ternel where I talk about seasons, day, night, uh, versatility and performance. Let's start with seasons. Um, this is more of a spring and fall baby. I really like this one in the spring and fall, of course, summer, that powderiness. Uh, like I said, with a lot of scents, um, it just doesn't work in the high heat. Summer night, yeah, maybe. Um, and the cooler winter uh, season, it can, but it's more of a tweener. Day or night, I say both. Um, it has some versatility to it, and that goes to versatility. It's fairly average. Um, it doesn't have much restriction, at least to me. I think the only restriction is in the high heat. I really, it didn't work. We'll see with more testing, but it didn't work for me. Uh, performance, very important, of course. Longevity was seven to 10 hours. It actually performed really well. Projection was surprisingly above average. Like people can smell this thing, um, which is a good thing. I I felt that it, 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 it classed me up a bit when I was wearing it. If I was wearing a suit and I was wearing this, it worked well together. They paired well together. So my final thoughts on Ombre Ternel. Well, Ombre Ternel, as you've guessed it, it's not based on the dark resinous amber. Um, there's nothing dark or resinous in this release. It's based on Ombre Gris. And honestly, even thinking, you know, I, you know, I've smelt Ombre Gris, but a lot of this is maybe going well over my head because I was thinking more leather, iris. Um, there's a lot to this release. And I feel like, this is more of an iris and leathery combo than anything. The overall theme, it's very dry. It's very gray. Often compared to Ziaram, I think this is the grown up version of it, the cleaned up version, the more niche version of it. I'm excited to get to testing this one in different weather. Um, start peeling some layers. Um, this is the type of scent that what I do on camera, this is what this is. These are the type of scents that um, keep me going, honestly. Um, these are the ones that are just like, I don't get them right away. Um, and a lot of scents when I'm doing, shooting a pop the cherry, which means I probably wore it four or five times, I usually get it. Those are the type of scents that I'm like, you know, I'm maybe wasting my time testing them so much. This is one of those scents that I'm gonna take my time with it. I already appreciate it. And yeah, I could do a 
pretty solid review of Omri Ternel, but I think there's a lot more to discover on this one. So this one has a lot of layers to it. I can't wait. Put in the vault, start wearing it more and more. So now I'm done with Omri Ternel. Time for you to hit us up in the comments below. What do you think of it? You know, uh, looking forward to reading, you know, the positive, the negatives that you guys have to say uh, about this certain release. At the end of the day, a great pour of fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your getaway release wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Have a good one.